right, welcome to another edition of Trouble Tea Time, presented by Trouble Tea. Uh, Ted Emmett, Ryan Lund here, for anyone who's uh, new to the Old Deer podcast, we're uh, a Red Deer podcast, that's about it. Here with our best friend, this 10-liter jug of Trouble Tea. Make sure you get those now, and maybe a new best friend, because he's the CEO of Alberta Beer Festivals, and you do a whole schwack load of other stuff that we'll, we'll let you talk about, too. But Mark Condrat, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, yeah. Now that you, you could you could tell my age on uh, based on how difficult it was for me to to join up on this thing, I felt like my mom trying to use a VCR or something like that. <laughs> well, you learned something new already, so we're off to a that's hot start. right. So I guess before we get going, as always, we have to thank Trouble Tea. You know, we have the the ten liter jug, which I think they have some left in store, but they're going quick. So get in it. And Mark, you know, Bud dropped off a, a whole bunch for you and. As always, to start off, I know you've probably had just about every craft beverage out there, but what do you think of the tea? Um, well, I always like to make fun of Bud, but I actually really like everyone else at uh, Troubled Monk. So to be honest with you, I, I really like it. It's, uh, yeah, and it's on a day like today, I'm not sure if there's anything uh, better. Yeah, this was full about 20 minutes ago, and now we're, yeah. We're getting oh, they're deep. They're dangerous. Talk a bit about Alberta Beer Festival. <laughs> Something, you know, I, I'm from Calgary. So when I lived there, I don't think I ever missed a beer fest uh, or any of the other uh, events that you put on there. Where, how did that all start? Um, yeah, it started, well, I went to U of A. Um, and when I went to U of A, I, I worked for Molson. So I always enjoyed the beer industry. Um, I, I, I realized I probably wouldn't be a great rep. Um, I just don't have the attention span probably for that. But uh, so I wanted to be in the industry, but not necessarily as a rep per se. So um, when I moved back to Calgary after school, uh, I was doing just some random kind of parties, I guess, with some friends. And um, and yeah, just kind of one event kind of grew and became bigger. And then eventually we were doing street festivals and stuff like that. And a friend of ours said, there's no beer festivals in Calgary. Why don't you do a beer festival? So um, we thought that'd be a good idea. Um, and then once we did the beer festival and just kind of got reconnected with all the people in the, in the industry, we just realized that that was really the direction we wanted to go. And um, we really uh, have been focusing on, on beer related events ever since. So that was probably 17 years ago. So it's been a long time. And uh, we've just been kind of growing since then. So, so Mark, I've never been to a beer festival before. So maybe you can explain to me and the, the others listening what they can expect when they uh, attend an Alberta Beer Festival. Yeah, so I'm just going to plug my phone in here quickly. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so if you come to a festival, basically what we want to do is we want to create a, an atmosphere where where people can share their stories. Um, you know, like we, we, we've never really followed a script per se. Um, and so, um, you know, obviously there's sampling involved, but the, the big thing is, you know, everything we ask is like, how can we connect the, the general public to the brands so that you get that emotional connection? Uh, because I've always felt that, you know, most purchases are, are emotional um, I've never looked at a can and said, how many IBUs are I going to buy this beer based on the number of IBUs there are on it? Um, it's usually something, you know, it's you usually had an opportunity to meet the brewer or meet one of the reps that you really resonated with. So our festivals are really based on creating as many touch points as possible so that you can get to know the people behind the brands. Um, and so with that, you know, we do cooking with beer seminars so you can meet the you know, we connect brewers with chefs so you can meet, you know, the chefs and the brewers. Um, they can talk about how they relate to each other. We do brewmaster seminars so you can get to know the people behind the brands. Um, and and the other thing, too, is every time we do a festival, we, we try to make it unique. So, you know, when, we, when if you ever come to Banff for our shows there, you know, they're super intimate. Um, and it's Alberta only in, a, in Banff. Uh, we only have Alberta breweries there. Uh, Jasper is totally different again. It's just, um, you know, so we don't, 
we try not to use a cookie cutter concept to our festivals, but like I said, with the, with the intention of always, you know, what can we do to really create that connection point, create that emotional connection between the consumer and the, and the, and the breweries. So that's kind of what we're all about. Now are the, are the festivals usually uh, over a period of two or three days or are they one day events or are they like a week long or is each festival kind of dependent on the, the time in the city? Yeah, you no know, good question. So that's actually something that's been really cool for us over the last year uh, because festivals have been illegal. Uh, so it's been given, <laughs> it's given us a great opportunity to reimagine what, what we would want our festivals to look like. Um, so for example, um, you know, like typically you're, it's just too much, you're, you're just going from one event to another. So once you're, once you're done one event, you're kind of literally just, you know, working towards the next event and you really don't get a lot of time to stop and really reflect on what you're doing and why you're doing it and, and, uh, and make changes. So this last year and a half has been an opportunity for us to do that. Uh, which is really cool. Um, and uh, we, we're pretty proud of the fact that our whole team has stayed intact. So we, um, you know, we always call ourselves a family and uh, we did everything we could over the past year to, to make sure that our family stayed together and uh, super proud to, uh, to say that we, we have. So um, one of the things that we've reimagined is what we want our festivals to look like. So uh, Calgary is a two day event. Um, and that's going to be this October. Typically our major shows would be in the spring this year. We're doing them in October because we've been given the green light to do so. So Calgary will be a two day event and then a week later Edmonton. So the Edmonton craft beer festival. Um, so those are both uh, Friday, Saturday. Um, but what we're really reimagining is what our mountain shows look like. So um, what we've wanted to do is implement a, a craft beer week uh, incorporate that into the mountain festivals so in banff what we want to do this year is we're going to do a festival two-day festival on one weekend then the the whole week will be the banff craft beer festival and then the following weekend we'll do another small festival that way we'll be able to showcase all of the alberta breweries and distilleries and cideries that want to participate um, but what that craft beer week allows us to do is really connect all of the brewers and distilleries with the local restaurants to really ensure that they're doing everything they can to work with the, the, the craft breweries. Um, so that'll be something that's new this year. And then in Jasper, we'll do the same. So we'll, we'll have a, a, a Jasper craft beer and spirits week um, where we'll go skiing. We'll do events at, uh, at uh, the local restaurants, liquor stores, and then that'll be capped by the Jasper uh, craft beer and spirits festival. Uh, so, um, so those will be long. Those will be like 10 day events. And then we're actually adding Revelstoke this year as well, or for 2022. So we're actually going to be doing a small beer festival on the mountain at uh, Revelstoke. So ski all day, uh, hang out at the beer festival all night. So that should be a lot of fun. And then we'll reset our schedule for the spring. So next spring will be the Calgary International Beer Fest and the Edmonton Craft Beer Festival again. And hopefully life will be normal for everybody. <laughs> Fingers crossed. So there you go. I'll take you to the Edmonton one. You can go yeah. Finally experience it. And I know, I, I will say, like, mission accomplished when you say connecting people with, with the brands. I know pretty much all, most of the first time I had anything, you know, was at, was at a beer fest in Calgary. And I think, you know, you especially got started really before the craft, you know, there was this huge boom in craft beer, too. And when you say you, you really care about the breweries, too, you actually have a podcast. You have a couple podcasts but one is basically dedicated to, to talking to basically brewers and, and people of the like around Alberta too, right? Yeah, hundred percent. So um, again, everything that we do is based on how can we create that emotional connection and, and kind of share their story. So um, that's what the podcast is all about is just letting people know who these people are. Um, it's easy to, you know, shit on brands and all that sort of thing uh, and people just need to realize that there's people behind those brands um good people that are working hard you know and uh and so that's what our job is i feel as alberta beer festivals is to share those stories um and it's it just it's a, just such a cool industry you know like 
you share the stories of breweries, but then you realize how connected they are to restaurants. And so then you share the stories of, of chefs and, and the entrepreneurs that own the restaurants and the breweries and the cideries and, and stuff like that. So, um, and then, you know, even just like the, the reps, I mean, as, as much as Bud annoys the hell out of me most of the time, he's actually a pretty good guy and he's actually a, a pretty good rep. So just good to be able to share all those stories, right. Is, uh, is, is really cool. And, um, yeah, like I always, the reason I started the podcast to begin with is I, I leave meetings and I'll just be vibrating. I'll be so excited with uh, who I got to meet and, and their story. And I'm like, I wish other people could get to know these stories. So the podcast has allowed me the opportunity to do that. So it's been a lot of fun. And I don't think we said it. I said it off the top, but it's called let's meet for a beer. Yeah. I'm kind of a one trick pony. Yeah. So <laughs> but you have you have another you have a separate podcast as well right like the yeah so podcast it's kind of a weird probably most people would say is a, a really i don't know it's it, it it makes sense to me but basically my podcast initially was let's meet for a beer and people thought that that was just beer related stories uh so i changed it to the contract podcast because i also i love sharing stories of just entrepreneurs in general as well and so I actually brought back the Let's Meet for a Beer podcast as an Alberta Beer Festival's project just to specifically focus on breweries and restaurants and, and the people within the industry. So, so yeah, I have the two. The Condra one is based on, I just, that's, share, that's sharing stories of entrepreneurs, you know, people that inspire me, that sort of thing. And uh, the, the Let's Meet for a Beer is, is uh, solely on, on the industry. So breweries, chefs, you know, entrepreneurs and uh, people that work their ass off within the industry. Oh, yeah, I just do this one podcast. It drives me absolutely bonkers. <laughs> I don't know how you, you juggle all that. And, you know, you, you said the C word earlier, right, with, with COVID and the, or someone said it. Maybe I won't put that on you, but you guys still, you know, did what you can and, and got out there too. I know a, a couple of times I've gone to the liquor store and bought the, the beer, basically beer fest in a box too. So what, what else did you guys do kind of, over the last year and a half. Yeah, so Beer Fest in a Box was an idea. Um, did I borrow it or did I steal it? But one of those Pretty two perfect. things. No, but a, a friend of mine just said, you know, they were working on a similar project. I can't remember where it was. I think it was in BC. But it wasn't called Beer Fest in a Box, but he was trying to explain it to me. And he, he said, it's basically like a Beer Fest in a Box. And I was like, oh, I like that. So I, I brought that to my team. And uh, they were just all over it. So like, yeah, within, honestly, from the second we talked about it, within a month, just over a month from that day, we had a, a beer, we had our first edition of the Beer Fest in a Box in stores. So like the logistical hurdles that, that the guys had to go through. Um, and I'm usually the one that works for, with AGLC and stuff. So I was kind of having like a PTSD moment in my life. And I'm like, I don't want to deal with AGLC on this. So I handed it off to the team and they just like took it and ran with it. And it, it was amazing. So, so that basically what we do with that is there's eight local breweries that we work with. Uh, so if there's, so say for example, right now there's the sour edition. Um, so there's eight different Alberta breweries um, that are featuring one of their sours. So, um, so yeah, if people like sours, you go and you get the beer fest in a box sour power edition and, um, you get to try eight different sours from eight different craft brewers. So it's, uh, it's really cool. We did an IPA one earlier. Um, that thing was insanely popular. So that's, yeah, again, it's been a fun way to, to help share their story and, uh, and get their, get their names out there. So Mark, I, I have to imagine that you, you've uh been to other provinces and been to other countries beer festivals have you have you stolen any ideas you repurposed any of their ideas or what was what was maybe the kind of the coolest you coolest thing you've seen uh from a beer festival uh not in alberta here yeah good question um well the victoria one's a favorite of mine it just that was one that i went to before we did our first one and um we just were so like, we we're just like, man, if we could ever have something this big, um, we'd be so pumped. And then about five years ago, it's funny because the guys from Phillips uh, on the island, they come to our festival every year. They're good guys. 
And uh, one of them, one of them, we were chatting after, and he said, "You know, I wish those guys from Victoria would come and check out your festivals because if they, you know, they could they could be as big as you guys if they if they really worked hard." And I just laughed. I'm like, that was like the biggest compliment I could have been given because to me, Victoria has always been the um, I, I don't know, kind of the benchmark. Um, because you just get to learn so much about the beer there. Um, so that one's a good one. Um, and then the Toronto one, we've been to a couple times. And that was a really good one. It's outdoors. We've tried to do outdoor events. Problem with Canada, or sorry, I guess Calgary. I'd say uh, maybe Alberta in general is our weather is just so fickle that it's, it's uh, yeah. You have a heart attack trying to, you know, the stress level of trying to do outdoor festivals. But Toronto is really cool. Um, and we try to do borrow some ideas from them. The problem is, is then you got to put them through AGLC. And, and the, just the rules that all the provinces have, even, like, you know, you talk to brewers and every brewer has, you know, even trying to sell their product in Toronto or Ontario is impossible, right? So AGLC versus the regulatory bodies in these other provinces are so different that you bring these ideas back and, and typically you, you can't really implement them. So, um, but uh, I, you know, yeah, so I guess that doesn't really answer your question, but one thing that I do, I, I take away from when I, when I go to places is if, if I do ever see connection points and like touch points of like, how do they, how do they get people to, connect with the audience um because so many times you'll go to a festival and it's just take the sample and then leave and it's yeah. like that's you know the taste of the beer is only half of the experience you need to get to know like if you come to our calgary show if you've been there in the past you like cold garden has, just puts on a monstrosity of a of a an area but it really it gives you a glimpse into what cold garden's all about right and so you really get, you get a sense of what their personality is. Um, and that's what we try to do. So, yeah. So I guess now I'm talking with all the festivals, you know, Alberta beer festivals have put on, or even one you've been to, might be hard to pinpoint one, but what's one of the weirdest or just craziest things you've seen, whether it's like a festival goer or just something that's happened? Um, at one of our festivals? Yeah, so or, or one you've been to, yeah. Well, I, I, so it, our Jasper one, we do it at Jasper Park Lodge, which is like a pretty hoity-toity place. And when I first went to Jasper, I was like, "There's, I'll go and talk to them. But I was like, there's no way we're doing a festival here because it's going to be just too pretentious and too, <laughs> and, uh, you know, beer should never be paired with pretentiousness. Um, but I couldn't, I, I, the, it couldn't have been, more i couldn't have been more wrong like they were just like the coolest guys and uh they wanted to do a festival there and uh everything we talked about they're like yeah let's do it and uh so la the last year we did the festival there they had two giant screens up it was the same day as the flames and the oiler so this was super bowl weekend of 2019 2020 so just before covid and uh, they had two giant screens up. We were watching the Oilers and the Flames play. It was the game that the the two goalies fought. I don't know if you guys remember that, yeah. but uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So you're in this like ballroom at the JPL, and uh, <laughs> everybody's just like partying to these these two guys, these two goalies fighting, um, and these guys are playing foosball fully shirtless and just like bumping like chest bumping and i'm just like i'm like i don't think this belongs at the jasper park lodge but it was done with such like fun that it was like it was just it just felt right for some weird thing it was just and it just didn't fit and what's funny is we're so used to shutting down our festivals like as soon as the as soon as the last call is um because we know aglc's at our festivals and stuff like that um, we're just like, okay, hey, everything shut down and we're so militant. Um, whereas JPL, they, they have different liquor licenses. So we were going around telling like audio visual, Hey, shut the, shut the game off, shut the music off. And they're go they're following us going, turn the game back on, shut the, <laughs> turn the music back. On. I'm like the JPL staff were like, why are you guys so anal? So uh, that was kind of one of the weirdest moments. I'm like, maybe I should lighten up a little bit at my festivals, but yeah, geez, man, chill out. <laughs> I am. Chill I'm actually. like, 
I'm not like, yeah, people don't like me at my own festivals. I had a beer with a guy after the Banff show a couple years ago, and he owns a brewery up north. And he was like, I don't think I've ever seen you drink a beer before. Because when I'm at my shows, I'm working, right? I, I, can't, yeah. I can't. So I'm like, oh, I drink. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what time is last call usually at, at the Alberta Beer Festivals? Um. Like- well, we, we're changing it up this year. On the Saturdays, we're doing two sessions. So typically, we would do a long session. But uh, this year, we're going to do uh, two, essentially two four-hour sessions. So if you come to the evening session, basically, last call is around 930. Because the other thing that we want to do, too, so we, we split up into two sessions so that people can, you know, we can spread things out a little bit more. Um, obviously, we're always trying to encourage safe consumption right um but the other thing too is if we if we end early enough then people can go out to the and experience the restaurants that are at the festival right which is one of the key things we want to do is again creating that touch point right um if we let them leave early enough then they can go out you know to to these establishments and, and check them out and have fun so um yeah we're done at like nine thirty, i think on saturday which is i guess pretty early but when you put a big shift in at a festival, like those, those brewers and restaurateurs, they're done, man. Like they're like, yeah. If we did an hour later, they'd, they'd kill me. Well, and then those drunk people are just everyone else's problem, right? All the other restaurants. <laughs> yeah. And so can turn them loose. You guys deal with them now. Well, and the big thing with that is, and again, shrinking down the consumption time, right? So instead of having, and most people don't, spend seven hours at a festival i mean but some people do you know what i mean and so i I mean when i go to victoria victoria sessions are like three hours and every time i go there i'm like that's not enough time and then an hour in i'm like that was more than enough time like you know what i mean like if if you maybe you just got to come in with a strategy you know this will make it more strategic for people the best strategy, I don't know, maybe when I edit this, you could tell me to cut this. But my strategy, my favorite part is like 9.15 or 15 minutes before last call. When all the other people are running around, they have too many tokens. Just and they just say, hey, it. here, have some tokens in that. But right? Like, you you know, you probably have twice as much to drink in that 15 minutes as the first <laughs> three hours you're there. Because everyone's trying to, to spend their tokens in that. It's kind of stressful, too, because there's, there's so many... Like I know every time I've gone, like it's gotten bigger and bigger, and you know I think it expanded to two different rooms basically. And, and yeah, it's yeah, stressful it's trying to get all those in. Like it's it's like being Augustus Gloop in the chocolate factory. There's just too much. <laughs> well, it's funny because when we first expanded to have the two halls, if you'd see people kind of hanging out in the one hall, and then eventually they'd realize that there's like this entrance into this, and just like seeing people get excited for like there's like twice as much space like they thought they had experienced the whole festival and then they walk over and they see that uh there's a whole new festival to experience it's it's pretty funny um we did change that though a little bit this year in that so at the stampede they created a new hall that's connected to to the two new ones so dini so instead of having the two rooms disconnected we're going to have just one giant room, uh, 150,000 square feet. So we'll have everybody in uh, the same room. So, so, so at, I think at, it'll be better. But at your at your beer festivals, when the when the restaurants show up, are they also serving food there too? Yeah. So um, yeah, food's a big component to the festival. Um, yeah. So we'll have, you know, last year we would have had typically we'll have around 30 restaurants in Calgary, uh, maybe a little bit more. We might shrink that down this year just because we are shrinking the space a little bit, like I said, because we we're taking the three adjoining, but we'll, we'll probably still have 25 restaurants. Um, and again, like, cause the idea is, and it's not just getting that, those numbers, like the, the numbers aren't as, aren't as important to me as getting the right restaurants. If that makes sense. Um, we want to have, and nothing against chain restaurants, because there's a lot of chain restaurants that do have good owners and good managers, and they truly do give a shit. Uh, but we want to make sure that we're sharing the story of, of the local restaurants um, and restaurateurs. So 
you know, if, if we have 25 restaurants, um, you can be pretty confident it's going to be 25 of the, you know, most unique restaurants in Calgary. Um, so, you know, and not maybe necessarily just beer focused restaurants, certainly we'll have restaurants that are focused on having an awesome beer menu, but also really cool ethnic restaurants that, um, you know, that are showcasing different types of food uh, because then you can learn about how different types of beer pairs with, with those foods. Right. So that's a whole you will go, you will not go home hungry if that's yeah. what you're worried about. There's 25 restaurants and I'm having 25 different things to eat. That, <laughs> that is, that is the other, other cool part. So I know uh, Mark, just uh, for anyone watching to that now, hopefully this has probably caught their attention and one of the, the upcoming festivals. Uh, are tickets already on sale for that? Are you guys already basically, you know, I, I believe, I could be wrong, but I think October, right, was Calgary and Edmonton? Yeah, that's right. So um, <clears throat> tickets are on sale. Um, so we, the, it's interesting because we, before COVID hit, we had sold a lot of tickets. Like we were on pace to have our best year ever. Um and so we're honoring every, anybody that bought tickets last year, we're honoring those tickets. So we've actually, we've reissued them. And, and so when we looked at everything that we've done, we realized that we're, we're pretty much at capacity. Sorry, the VIPs have sold out. So for Edmonton and Calgary on the Saturday evening session, we're sold out of VIPs already. So, um, so because we've honored all those tickets, we're, we're well on our way to, uh, to filling up, which is pretty cool. Um, and it obviously <laughs> makes people happy to know that we're not saying, Hey, sorry about your luck, but buy new tickets, you know? Um, and, and we also did that with all the restaurants in the brewery. So, um, we already have a pretty kick-ass lineup. So I'm pretty excited because a lot of the work that I'm responsible for, I did pre COVID. So nice. So now you can just sit back and relax, eh? Yeah, don't tell my team that because the, all their work has to be replicated. But uh, yeah. yeah, I'll just hang out. Well, you better get better get your Edmonton tickets well, soon. So I mean, you gotta just go in like a normal person. Well, so I'm assuming I'm assuming you're, <laughs> you're like a normal back. person. Yeah, I got to slum it with all those normies out there. Uh, I'm ass I'm assuming nope. that I'm assuming that you're planning on selling out both Calgary and Edmonton. So so you won't be selling any tickets at the door. Um, well, we kind of have to be careful with that because obviously we have capacity, but it'll, it'll, well, we, this year for sure, obviously we always want to make sure that we are at capacity, fire departments there and stuff like that. Um, this year we'll probably be even more careful. Um, and so I would say we probably will have tickets at the door. We always try to have some tickets at the door. Um, but we'll, what we'll probably end up doing is holding off. Um, and then, you know, if, if say a, a couple of days before the festival start, um, AHS kind of approves us for, for proper capacity and stuff, uh, then we'll open more tickets up. So, um, I'm hoping that, yeah, we'll still be able to have tickets at the door, but, um, that's never a guarantee, right? Because we can't, uh, like I said, we got, we got a lot of, you know, AHS, fire police, uh, AGLC, uh, the venue <laughs> all watching us. So, uh, a lot um, of party poopers out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and if we get shut down, all eyes on me. So, uh, yeah. let's yeah. make sure that doesn't happen. Fair enough. There's my last question on the festivals too. Like, you know, you have, you have the, all the, the breweries and, and restaurants there too. Do you, is there any like ever like live entertainment, like a band or like, do you ever hire like a red deer podcast who will work for hot wings or anything like that? No, I would never hire a red deer podcast. I know you're speaking in hypotheticals and generalities, but that would be, I, I would, tr I would bring it to my team. It's just me having grown up in red deer. My team would instantly kibosh that. Yeah, they bar they well, barely let me in the festival. Yeah. yeah. No, um, yeah, we have lots of, we always, uh, so we'll have a selection of like DJs, live bands. Uh, we always say that we're, 
uh, a beer festival with music, not a music festival with beer. So, um, you know, when I see bands coming in with these big setups, I'm just like, no, that's not happening. So, so we actually, we bring the audio equipment in and we tell the bands now like what they have to play with. So I'm kind of the party pooper a little bit at the festivals and <laughs> sounding like, but, um, but no, we want to make sure that, uh, you know, the bands are there to add a, an ambiance and they're there to, but, uh, the rock stars of the festivals are the, are the brewers, right? So um, we want to make sure that they're the ones that are, that uh, everybody goes home uh, pumped to have seen. So um, we're always very, very clear with that. We want to make sure that uh, the stories are about the beer and the, and the restaurants there. But having said that, I mean, yeah, it would be, it'd be a really weird setting if, uh, if we only had elevator music going on. So there's always <laughs> lots of fun music and stuff like that. So Mark, my last question would be, do you, do you have any tips for any first time festival goers? Um, well, I guess if, so personally, if I was, if I was to do the festival and I don't know, maybe my team will smack me upside the head for saying it, but I would go, I'd go to this, honestly, I'd go to the Saturday afternoon session. It's going to be, it's going to be quieter. Right. And so I guess it depends what you're going for. But like, for me, I, I just, I love seeing all the, the breweries set up. I love going to the sessions. Um, and you can, you can kind of do that in a more relaxed atmosphere on the Saturday afternoon. Again, maybe that's just me showing my age. <laughs> like I, I probably all, you know, I'll go to Swiss chalet for the, for the, uh, old man special too. But, uh, no, um, that would be my advice is like go early, uh, go in the afternoon session and enjoy it. Cause then that way too, you know, if you're in Calgary, you're right, you're right downtown, right? Like the BMO, like you can go to 17th Ave, you can go to Stephen Avenue, um, and you have like the whole night ahead of you, right? So I, I would say that, you know, cause most people want to go on the Saturday evening, which is totally f cool. That's great. Um, but, um, yeah, if you just wanted to have a kind of a chill afternoon with some buddies or if you're bringing the wife or the girlfriend, don't bring the wife and the girlfriend. That would be another piece of advice. <laughs> I would, I would, yeah. yeah, I don't have yeah. either. So. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, like I would honestly, um, if, if I was to select a, a time, I would, I would definitely go to the Saturday afternoon session. And, um, and I think when you're there, honestly, learn more about our mountain series, because I think what we're going to be doing in the mountains this year is going to be super unique. Um, and so we're always excited to do Jasper and Banff, but this year we're even more, more excited. I've, I've kind of done the Jasper and Banff one to give us an excuse to be hanging out in Banff and skiing yeah. every day and then do an apres beer. So hopefully everybody comes and joins us for that. That's where the experience comes yeah. in. Eh? Well, it 100%. Is Banff, man. One, one, and it is, it's a night. Mark, have you ever, one last question is, Bill, have you, do you think a lot of people like, I guess the hardos who really love their craft beer, do you have people who probably buy tickets to Saturday afternoon and Saturday evening and just really go for it? Probably. Yeah. Those guys are, those guys scare me, but, uh, no, no, for sure. And like, there's like, it's like any, you know, like there's, yeah, it's like, you know, Star Trek has their nerds and the beer industry has, has our nerds. Right. Um, and it's awesome. I love seeing them. I see them, you know, I see them in Edmonton and Calgary and Banff and Jasper and it's, it's, it's really cool. Um, so yeah, there'll be some hardcore guys like that, but, uh, <laughs> well, hopefully you'll see, uh, me set there. Yeah. I'm already playing in Edmonton in my mind. They just bought like on an auction, like a cheap hotel stay in Edmonton. So nice. It's all, yeah. it's all coming together. Yeah. So hopefully, <laughs> you know what, it, we, there's no pun intended, but we'll definitely try and meet for a beer sometime, whether it's Calgary here in Red Deer or in Edmonton, you know, we'll, we'll stay. Oh, in anyone. I'm, one thing people know about this podcast is we like people who have anything to do with beer nice, or, or, or alcohol at all. But. Well, that's the only reason you buddied up with Bud, I'm sure. I mean, oh, yeah. what else, what, what other redeeming quality does he have? I've been trying to figure that out for a few years. He's, he's an unbelievable actor. I don't know if you saw his video. 
notes the other day, but he, he had to play a confused salesman and he, he nailed it. Oh, yeah. Well, he must be a good actor. He seems happy to see me every time we see each other. So He always no. acts like he knows what he's talking about. Right? Yeah. No, you know what? I have to be in Red Deer. I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out my, uh, my life, but I'm supposed to do a podcast. I'm doing a series with Brightside, which is part of ATB. Oh, yeah. And uh, so they uh, would like me to come into Red Deer and do a podcast with Troubled Monk and then go to Blind Man and do one there. So um, I'll definitely be in town. So we should let uh, meet for a beer. Um, we'll do it at Trouble Monk. We'll even let Bud pay for it. Yeah. yeah. Look at how I generous know, we are. It's that much, right? Yeah. So yeah. we'll show you some more Instagram stuff too. Yeah. Like how to use it. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you caught on pretty quick as soon as you realized you had to use your phone. So well, I don't even know why I thought better. I would use my computer, but yeah. uh, whatever. See, that's, good. Old... that's good though now we know to tell people that in the future yeah well i was overthinking it like who who uses freaking instagram on their computer like <laughs> that was like a... talking on the phone instead of texting basically yeah exactly so that was a dumb move on me i overthought it and you know when you overthink things yeah you look everyone, like an idiot everyone gets one yeah what's mm -hmm. the saying when you overthink things you make an ass out of you and me yeah Something like that. Yeah. That's if you assume. <laughs> yeah, that was close. Yeah. You were close. You were close. Well, thanks for the iced teas. I was gonna say thanks for the beers, but uh, yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was a welcome surprise on my uh, on my doorstep last Friday. Yeah, Bud's good for something. Yeah, he has. He just had his five year anniversary at That's Trouble great. Monk. Yeah, happy anniversary, Bud. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I I lost a lot of money on that i i wouldn't have had him pegged at staying five years i thought they would have shipped him out years ago so got him for one year in the pool yeah yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> but oh well i guess they must not have a lot of good salespeople there in, in red deer no no but we'll do that we'll connect when i'm in red deer we'll uh we'll we'll, we'll head down to um troubled monk and have some beers yeah, absolutely. And thank you, Mark, again, for, for joining us. Alberta Beer Festivals, again, all over the province, a, really a, a huge thing now. And we're really excited that, that you can be back in action too this coming fall. So thank you for joining us, everyone. Calgary, Edmonton, Jasper, Banff, wherever it is, go get your tickets, go check it out. And as always, uh, thank you to Trouble Tea. Um, there's only a couple of these left, everyone. So make sure you go in if you want your Trouble Tea. Go into Trouble Monk right away and grab some jugs. Is Bud still saying that? He's always saying, oh, there's only a few left. You better hurry. I was there. There's thousands of them. <laughs> yeah. they, they can't get rid of them. No, I'm just kidding. I'm yeah, kidding. we were there yesterday. They're going pretty quick. Yeah. Because no, we, I, have like, we bought like 30 of them. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. We yeah. Our part. <laughs> <laughs> that's, all, that's all you can do, you know? Yeah. If everyone just does their part. <laughs> all right, awesome, well, guys. Yeah, cheers, Mark. Cheers. Great. Cheers, boys. Thanks for that. That was fun.